guys, welcome back to Making Frugal Fun. I'm Shannon and I share our family's debt-free journey to pay off over half a million dollars of debt and all the frugal things we do along the way to get there faster. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Every month I come on here and do a quick debt-free journey update and also give you guys some motivation for the upcoming month to stick to your budget and some common budget busters that might throw you off and just give you some motivation to stick through those. In case you missed it, I posted like a YouTube shorts video and also on my Instagram and TikTok, but we did finish paying off our student loans on October 7th. We made our final payment and that is done. It's paid off $381,000 completely paid off of student loans. I am so ecstatic. That would be an understatement. Like I am just, it's crazy. And thank you so much for following along on our journey for what will be almost four years in January. And so what we have left is an office business debt that is from COVID, unfortunately. It's like an economic injury development loan, an EIDL loan. And so we'll be working on paying that off with the profit from our um, podiatry practice. But on the personal side and like all the income that I bring home from my business making frugal fun, we will just keep trucking along through the baby steps on uh, baby step three now, which is a three to six month emergency fund. And we will, we should actually have a three month emergency fund funded by the end of November. And then we will start working on a down payment and we're hoping to move like in the early spring to our first house. That is, everything's gonna move really fast now that our debt is gone, which is really exciting, but it's also kind of scary because we've never bought a house before and all these things, it's gonna be really crazy, especially like the interest rates are high or higher than they were. And you know, everyone, it's just in the media all the time about housing and stuff like that. So it gets like nerve wracking, but I'm really excited for what lies ahead. And like all the things that we can do now because we don't have those student loans hanging over our head with the payment looming. So if you've been thinking about getting started on your debt-free journey, I just wanna encourage you that you can do it. When we started our debt-free journey four years ago, we were living paycheck to paycheck. We we're actually overspending what we were making every month. So we were just going further and further into debt and just, it felt like everything was crashing down. I didn't see how people could ever save a down payment for a home because I didn't understand how you could even save, you know, $50 in your account because we were just blowing through everything. So I just want to encourage you to get started. And as you figure out the budget and as you make that first payment on your debt, everything just starts to finally fall into place. And little by little, I mean, it took us almost four years to pay that off. So our total debt paid off is 571,000 and some change. I'd have to like look on my sheet. Um, but we still have about 136,000 left to go on our, on that business debt, which all together, like we should be able to do the emergency fund, the house and get that pretty much cleared up by summer. If things keep going as planned. So I will continue to update you on all of these things, but for now, I wanted to bring you into November Budget Busters and remind you that you can get my monthly Budget Buster printables using the link below in the description box of this video. Um, it's just a fun thing to add to your budget binder, and I have one for every single month with just like common things you should be remembering to budget for, and it'll just kind of help you jog your memory when you're making your budget because another thing about budgeting is that it should be different every month. So I definitely, when I first started budgeting, I thought your budget should be the same every month and that really tripped me up, but it should be different every month because your heating bill is not gonna be the same in December as it is in July and different things like that. So this will just help you jog your memory on some things that are coming up for each month. So for November, we can't forget about holiday travel if you are going out of town for Thanksgiving break, even if it's just, you know, across um, a few towns or something, gas, um, gas costs and things like that, you'll wanna make sure that you have budgeted for. And any food you're bringing to that event or if you're cooking the Thanksgiving meal, then you are definitely gonna want to make sure you budget extra in your grocery budget for those items. Make sure that you 
If you're having a large Thanksgiving dinner, make it potluck. Ask people to bring extra dishes and things like that so you're not having the entire burden of the Thanksgiving meal on yourself. Definitely gonna be doing a lot more baking probably too in the next couple of months if that's something you like to do. So baking supplies and things like that. And then decorations, of course, a lot of things you can do DIY, but you probably wanna start saving up for Christmas decorations too, even though that's not until next month. But, you know, Thanksgiving decorations, some people go a little more all out than others. We did get a turkey inflatable for the first time. I got it big lots, so I'm excited to put that up because we do like to decorate for Halloween and Christmas. We never really decorate much for Thanksgiving, so I'm excited to put our turkey inflatable up this year. <laughs> Also, childcare, if you're going to be working during Thanksgiving break or Veterans Day, like our kids have school off on Tuesday for Veterans Day, and if you're not gonna be home too, then make sure that you're budgeting for that extra childcare that you might need to spring for on these holiday days off. I know like we have gymnastics places in the area that do like a half day, it's like from eight to one for like $33 per child and they like it's like a gymnastics camp and they do those anytime school is out they have those camps so you might want to look for something like that in your area and there is an option to stay for the full day too if you work full time so just something to look into if you're going to run into that issue this month black friday and cyber monday you pretty much can guarantee that you'll be persuaded into buying something on sale for black friday or cyber monday so try to plan ahead the best you can um, maybe even finish all of your Christmas shopping this month while everything's on sale if you're really planned ahead and you could be totally done get everything for a deal and then not even have to worry about gift budgeting for December. But hopefully you've been saving a little bit each month for Christmas over the course of the year. But I know a lot of people don't do that or money's been really tight and it's been hard. So um, a couple of things. I know this is November budget, but you're doing Christmas shopping in November usually, or at least starting it. And one thing that has been crazy good for our family for savings is Facebook mar Facebook Marketplace. Call us cheap, I call it frugal, but, and also it's kind of like a hobby I feel like for my husband, but he is so good at finding deals. If he finds a toy or something he wants to get for the kids, he checks Facebook Marketplace first. And he usually gets all the kids Christmas gifts for like a quarter of the in-store price. So I highly recommend Facebook Marketplace because a lot of things on there are still brand new or very gently used and you're gonna save so much money by doing that. But whether you're getting it on the cheap or splurging, make sure that you have it budgeted for and that you're not busting your budget. Another thing that comes up a lot around this time of year are like kids holiday parties or book exchanges or, you know, bake sales. And like we have a silent auction coming up at the school. There's a lot of school parties and events. So make sure that you set aside a small amount, small to medium amount of cash for kids holiday parties and events. While you have all of these things that you're making sure to include in your November budget, then you can also start thinking ahead to what is to come. And that's of course Christmas, Christmas break, Christmas childcare, Christmas activities. There are so many cool things. And if you wanna be really frugal, just like driving around and looking at lights, going on walks in like really nice neighborhoods where they're all decorated. Those are some great, really cheap and affordable family activities to do. And then you could pick like one or two splurge events where you go um, look at like some more organized fancy light displays where you like drive through or, um, you know, go to like a performance or like the ballet or something like that with the family. But you don't have to feel like every weekend needs to be full of activities just because it is December because the kids are gonna remember even the smallest movie nights with hot cocoa. That's one of our absolute favorite things to do. And of course with like Disney Plus and Netflix, there's like a kajillion Christmas movies that you can watch. And then you can get the Costco pack of hot cocoa, which we have, has like 50 packets in there. And you've got plenty of Christmas night, PJ night, movie nights planned out. So it's perfect idea for frugal 
Christmas activity with the family. I hope this list of November budget busters really helps you get motivated for November. And remember, it's never too late if you're watching this video in like mid-November or something like that. It's never too late to start budgeting. Don't wait until the next month and say, I'll start then. It's serious. It's like dieting, like when you're like, oh, I'll do that later, I'll do that later, and you keep pushing it off. The best thing to do is start and you're gonna fail, you're gonna make mistakes, but just keep pushing forward and adjust as you go. That's what we did and we went from being, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt to now, you know, paying off $571,000 of debt in four years and getting ready to finally buy our first home, which has been a huge goal for us for many years. We've been married, it'll be 11 years this January. So it's gonna be a really exciting time for us but we never would have got there unless we just like started and it was messy and it was hard. So I hope this gives you some encouragement for your November budgeting. Thank you so much for following along on our debt-free journey and for watching my videos. I'm so grateful that you're here and for you this November and I'll see you guys in the next one.